Welcome back to the It's Karate Time mixing walkthrough. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the percussion in this cue. So I have three percussion stems that you can see here, Orc Perk, Perk, and Synth Perk. Um, these are actually stems, and that's not my typical naming uh, convention, but um, Zach and Leo had already um, delivered some cues before uh, season one started um, with a stem layout, so I kind of conformed to their stem layout. Um, Orc Perk is pretty straightforward. That's timpani and all the things, bass drum, cymbals, all that kind of stuff that would be typically played with an orchestra. Um, perk is more of the taikos and groovy stuff and booms and kind of the more production percussion that's not traditionally part of a um, orchestral percussion template. And then synth perk, I just kind of treat as just an extra. Um, we'll see what's in there, but it's probably tickers and um, clicky kind of stuff. Maybe claps sometimes. I don't think there's claps in this cue, but... Anyway, let's see what's going on in these. Um, starting with Orc Perk. So these are the uh, the last two overdubs from the orchestra session. This is just the percussion. Um, and then we have a bunch of snares going on here. And I think a lot of this stuff was added, uh, delivered to me after. Because after I did my first pass, I think Zach and Leah were like, we need more snares in this section. So they just printed off all these extra snares to have this... Um, I guess I would call this an army of snares, even though we have two tracks that are called that. Um, and it looks like here, this is a, this is evidence here of production. We got rid of some of the live uh, percussion here and uh, muted these last two because they just sort of, again, threw the kitchen sink of snares and we decided the last two weren't needed. Um, but let's take a look here at uh, just one of the um, percussion passes. So here's live orchestral percussion with um, no processing right now. Just timpani in this case. There we have a bass drum roll with some cymbals, so on and so forth. Um, up here, this is probably the snares on the first pass, actually. Yeah, that's live snares. Sounds like two of them. So that's what's going on there. Um, here's the extra snares that were added together with the live snares. So they're just nice sounding samples. You can hear they were uh, given to me with free reverb already printed there. <laughs> Typically I like to get things dry, but sometimes that might've been the room they were recorded in. I'm not sure what the samples were. In this case, that's what they sounded like. It worked fine. It's maybe a little bit long, but eh, it is what it is. Say Louis. Yeah, so I just added some extra weight and oomph and size because now instead of just two snare players in a room, we have who knows how many <laughs> um, because of those samples. Probably had a lot of players as well. Lastly, there were some sample tubular bells. You know, that is what it is. Very synthy sounding tubular bell. Sounds like there's a chorus or something on there. Um, that's how it was delivered to me. All I'm doing is a little EQ and uh, a little verb. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's the uh, orchestra percussion with no processing. Let's just listen to that section again and maybe flip on my EQs. Um, like the rest of the um, brass and string overdubs, uh, looks like it was probably the exact same EQ settings for the tree and the outrigger. And then once again, I did nothing there on these perks, oop, on these perk spots, just a little bit of um, filtering and only filtered one. A lot of these sometimes weren't even really used, um, though I just kind of had them all up there based on my uh, template. So there's the channel EQs. Looks like on these snares, I just kind of cleared up the middle mid-range. It was a little too heavy. Again, in the whole mix, it might have sounded nice um, here without anything else going on, but I just wanted to clear that up a bit, clear up the mid-range, clear up the low mids, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, then reverb-wise, let's do that next. Uh, it looks like I'm just using the symphony and the altiverb uh, here. The altiverb is going to be the exact same room, kind of with the, the idea that the orchestra percussion was in the room with the strings and brass. So just kind of blending that using the exact same reverb. Um, so we'll look at that in a second. And then this symphony is um, my old typical um, 
percussion reverb. I now have switched to using cinematic rooms uh, in this case. Uh, I still use Symphony for a lot of other things, but for my percussion reverb, it's uh, these days cinematic rooms. But this is a template that I, you know, has sort of has origins in 2017, I think is when I did season one of Cobra Kai. Um, so I felt no reason to change uh, that for this show. But two seconds, not super long, but not super short either. Um, just sort of a nice uh, per call. That's the only two things that I'm adding here. So let's uh, add the reverbs in. Here's the room. So you can really hear that room on the percussion because obviously it's so transient um, based. Uh, you can really kind of hear the, the, you know, the mix get a little bit bigger and deeper and just sort of puts everything a bit more in a space so it's not quite so up in your face. Um, and then adding the hall should be a bit more of an overt reverb. Yeah, so actually it's not really that much longer than the altar, which is sort of a different color um, and more of just a straightforward hall instead of a stage. Um, so those are the two um, reverbs going on there. It looks like I didn't use... Oh, actually, I did use this 250, which I typically use on cymbals. Um, this is the EMT, you know, the classic digital reverb unit, the very first digital reverb ever made. Um, and it's maximum uh, length, maximum pre-delay, maximum happy face curve, you know, turn, well, I just turning down the low end, turning up so the brightness... Um, in surround, I'll typically use two of these and then the other, you know, the one in the front will be um, turned down to 40 here and 4.0 with the long one being panned in the surrounds. Um, and then I will also use this handy little rear output uh, switch uh, when I'm doing this in surround, um, just so that's a little bit different color in the back. And then when they sum together in the stereo fold down, don't have any issues there. Um, but that's obviously surround talk and this is just a stereo session. So it looks like I use those for the bells just to give them a little extra length. Yeah, just a little bit more epic tail on those uh, tubular bells. The 140 looks like I did not use, but we'll just unmute that so that it's all unmuted. Uh, and let's listen to the bus now. Bus EQ looks like, again, just sort of clearing up that low mid range because there's so much going on in this queue. The low mid started to um, eat up. I think at, at a later point in this mix when I was kind of further along, I just kind of went through every single stem and just sort of scooped out different amounts of low mids just because the whole mix was getting a little too heavy in that range. Um, but here's what that sounds like. Won't really notice on snares as much. We have to listen to like the um, timpani here. Not a huge difference. Lastly, I'm doing some compression. I do love this uh, SSL compressor. Um, that's on all the perk buses, I believe, in probably almost the exact same settings. So here's what that sounds like. On orchestra percussion, it's not doing a whole lot, just barely kissing it. There's maybe moments where I push up the orc perk where I'll compress a little bit more, but um, this comes into play more, um, obviously, on the... Uh, other percussion and the drum kit which we'll look at in another episode but next that's the orchestra percussion let's look at what's in the perk folder i believe oh there wasn't a ton sometimes there's a lot of program percussion that goes in the perk here um, but we have some dicos tycos junes a deep boomer more tycos metal ensemble um, which actually i think this stuff uh, is kind of a terminator vibe that they wanted for um, robbie i believe Sizzle drum, metal gong, all sorts of stuff going on here. Um, so let's just turn that on without any processing and take a listen to what this is doing. Just some low stuff here. Looks like this is more of a, um, not just Robbie, it's the bad guys. There's some of the grooves.
So that all sounds fine. I mean, it's a little bit heavy. It doesn't have much brightness, so that didn't cut through the mix as well. So I'm sure once I turn my EQs on, we'll probably get a little more presence and a little bit more um, bite. But overall, you know, these are good sounding percussion samples. So let's turn on my channel EQs, which you can see now um, there's some Pro Q2s and there's some Pro Q3s. This is because a lot of these sounds um, are in a, I have a, a template separate from um, my mixing template that has, you know, probably like a thousand stereo pairs now in it that is um, just the, the inserts and sends and output settings from every single track that I've gotten from Zach and Leo in their various sessions, the stuff that comes out of their sequencers. And I just save all of those settings in a big session. And when I prep a session, um, I'll match tracks and import the settings from that template into my mix. And then I've already mostly done the work. Um, so these are, that's why there's some Pro-Q 2s because I started this show before Pro-Q 3 came out. Um, if you were wondering. <laughs> so here's uh, with the uh, EQs turned on. So not a huge change. I think channel EQs, I was just, yeah, clearing up some low end. A little mid-range cut. Nothing too crazy. Uh, Reverb-wise, uh, this is probably... Oh, this is the 20th Century Fog. This is a new thing for me, relatively new in the last couple of years. I used to use Todd AO for percussion as well, but then I got some sessions actually from some other composers that use Pro Tools, and they were using this 20th Century Fox uh, scoring stage on some percussion, and I really liked how it sounded. Um, that is a phenomenal room to record percussion in here in LA. Um, so that's what I'm using for the room on the percussion. And since these are not percussion elements that were a part of the orchestra, you know, I can kind of stray uh, away from necessarily using Tadeo and the same kind of reverbs um, and kind of put these in a slightly different space. So here's uh, the reverbs and then this um, symphony is probably the exact same hall. Uh, yeah, two point whatever seconds. Um, my perk hall three. So let's add some reverb. So that's very short. Um, Tadio is, of course, a much bigger, wetter sounding room than Fox. Fox is by itself very, very, very dry um, and it's very, very, very short. Um, but it has a really nice depth. And um, this also adds a, a decent amount of low end as well. So I might be suppressing some of the low end in the bus EQs. We'll see that in a second. Um, but that can be a good thing. You just have to be aware that that convolution, if you don't, um, and I pulled back the low end a little bit, but it does add that room. It's a very warm room. Um, so that's adding that. Let's add the hall. So that's more overt reverb. Yeah. Um, I have a, this 140 plate and the um, RMX here, AMS uh, RMX 16, that is not used in this queue, but they're a part of my template. Um, so we'll just unmute those for, for fun. Um, let's check out some other sections and start adding the uh, EQs. So I didn't do a ton here. Just sort of cleaning up some low end. You know, this just got a little bit heavy. Actually, let's go back to that other section. It's a little more interesting. Uh, EQ P1, uh, this Poltec, I do love uh, this EQ, just sort of as a, you know, again, sort of a mastering EQ. I mean, I don't like to call it mastering because it's not mastering, um, but I'm doing the Poltec trick here, the boost and attenuating at the same frequency, um, centered around 60. This is a quirk of the Pultex, the, um, since they had different circuitry for boost and attenuation back then, um, they were just, there's an imperfection in the Pultec where the, even though you set the uh, cycles per second, the frequency to 60, um, I think the attenuation is like 63, 64, and then the boost is just below it. Um, so if you turn them both up, you don't cancel them out. It actually kind of creates this nice little, you know, happy curve. Um, so that's called the Poltec low end trick. It's a great thing to do. It sometimes clears up your low end, just makes it sound nicer. Um, so that's something I think I do this on, um, well, I didn't do it on Orc Perk, but I think the Synth Perk and drums have the same kind of trick. Um, and then I just have a nice broad 8K, um, as you can see the bandwidth here, um, is turned up to six. And I'm sure that of course also, you know, changes the low frequency that I think the center frequency is probably changed to stay the same, but then obviously just the bandwidth is going to be a little bit wider. So it's a little bit more gentle of a low end trick than if it was, you know, turned down to zero, the sharp settings. Um, then yeah, just a broad boost here. This is just going to add a little more 
bite to the percussion and just kind of get it to cut through the mix a little bit more. So let's turn that on. Yeah, so again, not super heavy. I have turned this up more. Sometimes if I just want a little more by the percussion, I just open this up and just turn the boost up as much as I want. Um, in this case, I think most likely there's so much other high end. I mean, there's so much other stuff going on. I didn't need it quite boosted that much. But yeah, it just adds a little bit of presence to things. And then, of course, I have the SSL compressor, likely the exact same settings as the uh, Orca Perked. Let's listen to that. Doing nothing. So there are some cues that uh, really push into this compressor more. It's why it's in my template. This one, it looks barely, barely moving the needle every now and then. Um, but honestly, this is actually kind of a percussion light. Like I said, some of the other action cues in Cobra Kai can have just tracks upon tracks upon tracks of um, percussion. So that's the perk stem. Now let's listen to the synth perk. What did I put in there? Okay, so I just, yeah, I split up some metal stuff. So in this section, um, I just wanted to give the dub a little bit of separation between these elements, um, these metal jams and delay perk. Let's hear what those sound like. You can hear that's already baked in with reverb, though, you know, that's kind of a sound they liked. I don't know if it's part of the sample or something that they did on, on their end in the DAW, but I was fine with that being baked in because it sounds good. Um, let's add my EQ. Didn't do much there. This is just a filter. Filter, a little high mid. Uh, reverbs, I am actually on this sound. Looks like I'm using this uh, plate. This is my typical... Oh, actually, nice snare plate. I do have a preset of my own here that's uh, the short, uh, 140 short is for the percussion front and surround because um, I'll use these in pair. You know, one in the front, one in the back with the same send. Um, but yeah, it looks like two point something seconds. Um, I do a little EQ. Yeah, I turn... Oh, wow, I turned the... Oh, sorry. Just the low end is turned down here. Um, little, mm, almost no pre-delay. Filter in the input. Plate B. I think this is just a preset I, I put up and maybe modified a little bit. Um, I like to do that a lot. I'm a big preset fan. Um, sometimes if I feel I need to, of course, I'll come up with my own sound and my own tweak. But when I get a new plug-in, I'll just start flipping through presets and find something that sounds cool and modify from there. And if it sounds good, it is good. So let's add some reverbs. Here's some room. This is also the Tadeo. Oh, sorry, the uh, Fox. Uh, there's the reverbs. These two were not used, but we'll unmute them for fun. Bus EQs did nothing on this. Didn't think it needed anything. So um, all my Pro Qs kind of start with this filter here, way down at 20, um, just so that I can just grab it and, and move it up. Um, I do realize that there might be a little bit of a buildup because of the nature of a filter there, but at 20 hertz, probably not a problem. Um, and given that I have full range monitoring, I'll probably I, I would hear that if it was an issue. Um, but there's that. It looks like the exact same Poltex settings. I just copy them over. Let's turn that on. So yeah, just giving a little extra uh, clarity and uh, presence. And then this guy. Probably do nothing. Yeah. Too quiet of a signal for that to do anything. So there you have it. That's the percussion from this uh, cue. Um, click over to the next episode to see how I mix the drums on this cue. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.